Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching another video in our, we're going to do a video every single day for the month of October. Um, and uh, the playlist is getting big. In fact, it's going to be 31 by the time the, uh, by the time we're finished with this. And if you haven't seen them all, I hope that you click the little playlist thing. You got to go to our channel thing and then click playlist and, 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 and you can find every single video that we've done. I also hope that you guys have subscribed if you haven't, because the reason that we're doing this is to get kind of a subscriber push. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and we, we're getting a little bit and we'd like to get more. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button, click the, the bell deal and the thing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I make guitars. I don't make videos. And I guess I do a little bit of both. But anyway, the, the, enough with the bullshit talk, okay? So in today's video, I'm going to glue the wings onto this, um, uh, this, neck through body SG style guitar that I call the prostitute. I honestly don't know why I called it that to begin with, but the, but the name came from a History Channel show that was actually about drag racing, not about prostitutes. In any case, um, there's a couple of things though that when you're doing neck throughs, you have to think through and you have to get right. Uh, you have to make sure you get the order correct. It just makes every step down the line way easier. And by the way, um, lots of guitar building is like this. You got to kind of get stuff in the right order to make life easier in the future. And that's what we're all about, right? <laughs> okay, so let me change the camera angle and show you what we're talking about. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, gang, my workbench is a complete disaster area. But remember, this is a working shop, right? It's not like you guys don't know that. This is a working shop, and, and this, is, uh, this is what we do here. So uh, my, my, yeah, my production value on my video is not what some other guys' are. So I make no apologies for that. I like what I do in any event. Um, our neck through portion is ready to go. Our wings are, um, are ready to go. For those of you who participated in the, hey, what wing material should I get? Um, uh, I went with Limba and it's got some black Limba streaks in it and I think it's going to look pretty neat. Um, lots of good suggestions. There were some people that said um, uh, walnut or ash. All that stuff would have looked cool. Um, but I think uh, when I went to Austin Hardwoods, the Limba was a really good deal and they had like almost exactly the amount of money or I'm sorry, exactly the amount of material that I needed. No more, no less. And um, so it actually, it actually worked out pretty well. Um, I did look at stuff like leopard wood and walnut and lace wood and paduke and purple heart. And they were a little more expensive and they had like lots and lots and lots of it. When I got there, I did think about zebra wood, but they didn't have any. So I'm like, all right, let's go with this limba. I think it's going to look cool. Um, now it's going to look very square for a while and someone someone's going to think that they're clever and say it's a Bo Diddley guitar so that's what they sound like when they do that okay so um anyway gang there are some things though that we have to do to a neck through design um th that we can't do later so for example we have to be able to get wire from the neck pickup to the bridge pickup and from the bridge pickup to the control cavity. We can't take the neck off and drill a hole later. Um, this, this wood or this body is so thin that trying to cut this angle would be, we would go through the back or if we went through the back, we would go through the front or you know what I mean? It's so thin, we just don't have a lot of material. So I'm gonna show you what I did there. Um, a couple of things about this guitar that I wish were a little different. One, I wish that this were 24 fret, but when I built this neck through, I, I, um, I didn't think, I didn't think far enough ahead. So I wanted to keep it, um, I wanted to keep it, uh, uh, looking cool. So we'll put a little placard right there. The other thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to put this back on the pin router and then like route a channel on top and cover that with a pick guard. You know, I think I want to put one of those little like 61, uh, length pick guards on here, size pick guards, if anything. So I think that, I think this is going to be a cool guitar. So what I did was, um, oh, okay. So what I did gang was I 
routed a channel in the neck through portion and in the lower wing as well as I went ahead and routed for the uh, for the the control cavity too. That's just going to make life a little easier. Um, so I've, I don't know if you can see it here. I think you probably can. If you can't, let me just show you. I routed a channel from each from one pickup to the next, and they they actually it lines up with this slot that goes um, from the from the front pickup to the back pickup and then all the way to where my, my control cavity um, begins. Then I drill the hole starting at the, at the end of the cavity kind of at an angle and then when I routed my, um, my control cavity I've got, I've got wire there. The reason I did it at an angle is so that when I push wire in this way it, it doesn't have to hit a 90 degree wall and then and then go down so I push it in at an angle that means wire will just kind of flow right directly into the control cavity so that's something to think about the other thing that I did was I added some pins onto my wings and some holes onto my neck through and they're going to help keep everything aligned when I um, get on there now when I glue this together. Um, you'll notice that there's only one uh, on, on, on each side in the back. That's because if I went to put a pin here or a pin here, I guess I could put a pin right where the pickup is and that would help uh, stabilize everything um, on, the, on the top part of the body. Or I could go through I could go all the way through this um, uh, from the pickup there into the, but you can see what I'm going for there, guys. I'm running out of room um, on the front of the guitar. And of course, this area here all gets carved quite a bit uh, uh, for, the, for the SG shape. So what I did was I just put pins on the back. And what I like to do then is um, I take some clamps here, and it doesn't matter if they're, you know, what, what kind of clamps you use. Um, I like these squeeze clamps because they just make life easier. Um, I'm going to put those clamps on the front and then when I go ahead and um, and snug down the, um, uh, the, the clamp here, that's going to keep the, the, the wings from smushing around and they're going to keep the body and the wings mostly mostly on the same plane okay uh, the pins are going to do that on the back here you could not do pins and just put a couple of clamps on the back end and and that would work well too but then you might get shifting laterally okay so um, having a pin or something there not salt remember salt is for fries having a pin or something is makes a lot of sense Okay, so uh, you guys want to see what this thing is going to look like? You can kind of get an idea. There's a line right here of where this is going to be when it's all said and done. And this is going to be a pretty neat guitar. I think whoever said Limba was, uh, I agree with you. That is a good thing. So you know what? Let's not stand on ceremony. Let's, let's glue this dude together, shall we? Um, a couple of things that I'm seeing right away is, oh, come on, man. A couple of things that I'm seeing is my wing pieces are shorter than my neck piece. So I'm going to put glue on the wing pieces rather than smear a bunch of glue all the way to the end of the neck piece and not have that actually um, do anything. I want to try to keep as much glue out of my control cavity slot as I can. Um, well, that'll be pretty easy, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and get rolling. So we'll put some glue on here. Um, some people were attempting to uh, sway me into putting something heavy like a rosewood or wenge on the body, and that's a good idea, but um, I like how easy it is to glue up 
wood that isn't super oily. Um, and this particular um, piece of, of limba that I got was, uh, like I said, was pretty affordable. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and get that dude on there. We'll put some glue on the upper wing. And because we um, endeavored to do all the things right, this guitar is just gonna, it's gonna clamp up and it's gonna be fairly like, no, oh, that's it? Yeah, anticlimactic, right? Anticlimactic, okay. So, yeah, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the point, right? You don't wanna have a, um, a crazy time um, when it's time for gluing. I like things to, to be, when it comes time to glue stuff, I like for things to be nice and easy. Okay, so as you can see, the rear pins are doing their thing. Okay, I'm gonna snug these, I'm gonna snug these clamps down. I wanna make sure that I leave a gap for my clamps here. In other words, I don't wanna push my, my bar clamp all the way to the front, okay? All right, and now, Look at that. Ugh. And I think I want to put another clamp on top just because. Ugh. All right. All right, that's looking pretty good, you guys. We don't need to have those guys on there because now everything's set up. And it looks really, really choice. There's not a lot of, um, uh, there's no gaps or anything. This, this looks like a hundred million dollars. So I'm gonna clean up the glue off my table and um, let's wrap this video up, shall we? Man, this is going to be one heavy SG. We won't have to worry about neck dive, though. <laughs> well, guys, I've been having a great time uh, doing these videos every single day for the month of October, and I've been having a really good time doing some of this neck through stuff, too. Um, I think that I want to offer a neck through uh, workshop, maybe one of the essential guitar building videos. Uh, I, it's going to have to be... It's going to have to be a fairly intense uh, proposition. And I think that I'm going to start offering those. We're going to start offering more of the essential guitar building stuff in 2025. So if you have any more questions about like doing a neck through guitar, you might want to send me um, some, send me some, some comments and questions. And, you know, so see, I can, I can tell if that's something that you guys might want to, might want to have as an offering from 5280 guitar building workshops, right? So, Anyway, we're gonna let this set overnight and um, maybe we'll do a video where I cut it out and I'll start to look like a real guitar pretty soon, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, so, but that's, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video because like I said, it was, it was fairly, fairly easy and there were no, no surprises because we planned our work and we worked our plan. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, Gosh, I guess if you, um, uh, if you like this video, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, even though I asked you in the first part of the video, please consider doing that. If you, um, if you appreciate the content that we make, uh, I would really like it if you went over to our Patreon page and became a member there, or if you became a member on YouTube. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat content like this. But if you can't do it, no problem. Join us on Thursdays for our, um, our regularly scheduled live streams and Fridays for our reveals. Buy a t-shirt, buy a guitar, share the video as many, many places as you can possibly think of. And until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. I